Hey there, it's Garbro again, coming back to you with another story for you guys to enjoy. This will be a multi-parter, so expect more videos through the week, or at least one or two every week that y'all can watch, listen to, and enjoy. Well, here I am. I don't know why I'm bothering to keep this journal. Only a handful of people in this place will be able to read it when I'm gone. For peace of mind, I suppose. Where to start? It was another typical day of doing nothing, trying to get to work and keeping myself entertained. I'm not sure what happened, but suddenly there was a voice in my head telling me I had to prepare. Before I knew what was going on, a doorway, a portal, opened up in my living room. Round, glowing, and beyond a city of some sort. It looked positively medieval. Stone and wood buildings, strange people, some not even human, a fantasy world. Somehow I knew I had 30 minutes before it closed. It felt like a dream, and perhaps that's why I went through. I thought it was a dream. It seemed like the logical thing to do at the time. I don't know why. At least I had the presence of mind to grab what I could and not just hop through. What a catastrophe that would have been. So, here I am, wherever here is. I guess I should find out and see what's going on. Journal Entry 2 What the fuck was I thinking? So, here I am, in some fucking fantasy world, magic and everything. Shortly after I arrived, that dreamy feeling fell off and the reality of the situation has hit. I'm stuck here, and I don't know why. I'm not alone, though. There are a handful of others in the same situation. We're all foreigners here, stranded and effectively homeless in this place with no idea why. Speaking of this place, it's called Rosenbridge. I have no trouble communicating with the locals, but I can't read their language. They use some kind of squiggly shit that makes no sense to me. I think spoken language is just being translated for us at this point. Rosenbridge is apparently a town and a trade hub connecting several larger cities. Kind of a place where the different races of this world pass through. I've seen elves, dwarves, or gnomes, some lizard thing, and, and some others that I'm not entirely sure of outside of the common humans. I'm kind of creeped out, to be honest. Anyway, we're all camped out in some alleyway near the outer wall of the city. Journal Entry 3 Well, I just witnessed some magic. It was pretty spectacular, but I guess it's a common thing that the locals didn't seem to give mind. Some guy in robes doing some display in the town square. Burst of light, movement of hands, and mumbling, and boom. I'm not entirely sure what happened. Alex, one of the people that's in the same situation as me, was going to see if he knew anything about why we're here. Fucking wizards, man. There's what I estimate to be several thousand people milling about the markets. I don't know why, but for the first time I feel intimidated by a crowd. I get an odd, overwhelming feeling. I think it's stress. I may be starting to lose it. God knows Avery hasn't fucking stopped crying since we found her and gathered up in the alleyway. Journal Entry 4 Well, Alex's wizard friend had no ideas and didn't seem the least interested according to him. Fucking wizards. Anyway, caught some kid groping at my ass. I think he was looking for a coin purse. The locals don't seem to actually have pockets on their clothes. Everything is carried in little pouches. Anyways, Pistol whipped the little fucker off his feet and took off. I wish I had money. I'm starving, and none of us have anything worth trading. Thieving or begging may be in our future, or prostitution if things get desperate. What the fuck is going on? Journal Entry 5 So, Rosenbridge. It's apparently mostly built on some massive ancient bridge that's over a river leading to the ocean. Part of the trade routes coming through are by boat. This is apparently the stopping point as it gets too shallow, or rapids or something beyond this. Spent some time down at the waterfront. Managed to swipe some bread. It was rock hard and tasted terrible, but fuck I was hungry. This is the first time I've come to know real starvation. 
It looks like the others have found something to eat. Someone, I think Max, said that there was a church that gave donations to the poor. We'll have to check that out. Journal Entry 6 There's some carnival in town today. Strange foods, acrobatics displays, and showy wizards. Alex has been hanging around the wizards and observing. I think he's going to try and figure out this magic stuff. Best of luck to him. Anyways, checked out that church. It's a bunch of sun worshippers. They give some kind of oatmeal slop once a day to the poor. It had no taste, but it was filling at least. The chick giving handouts seems surprised at the sudden influx of hobos in town, namely us. We've decided to stay tight-lipped about our origins for now. Don't need any more trouble. Hung around the carnival for most of the day, but didn't have any coin for the real shows. Entertainment's been slim. My MP3 player battery has been dead more than it's been charged. The solar charger I brought with me is slow as hell. Journal Entry 7 Jason got mugged today while he was pissing behind some tavern. Lost everything. Luckily, we found most of it in a heap by the waterfront. Unfortunately, the screen on his Kindle is cracked now. Alex has been gathering up some stuff just outside town. Grass, leaves, some kind of flower. He says he wants to try one of those carny wizard spells he spent all day watching. Some kind of ingredients along with vocal and hand motions are involved. We're not sure if the hand motions and vocal parts are required or just something for the show. I guess he'll figure it out in experimentation. He has some hard-on for learning the locals' magic. I don't think we can. We're not from this world. Journal Entry 8 So some guard comes around our alley and starts bullying us around. Turns out he wants some people to work on the docks for a few copper coins. Most of us went for it. Money. I did as well. Backbreaking work moving crates and sacks and shit to and from boats and onto carts. My arms hurt, and will probably hurt more tomorrow. But we've got money, and it's not illicit money either. I think Amanda was just another day from whoring herself out to the locals. I think she's a bit too chubby for that to work out, though. The locals are all malnutrition thin. Peasants, aside from the rich, slash nobles, slash merchants, which are a bit pudgy. Journal Entry 9 Oh god, what am I doing here? I've been working my ass off at the fucking docks all week just for a pittance, and it's barely enough to survive. Plus, I'm dodging thieves and guards looking for a beatdown all day and night. I hate this place. What the fuck was I thinking? Journal Entry 10 So, while I'm riding, sitting on the edge of the fountain in town, some guy comes up and seems incredibly fascinated by my pen. It's a big ballpoint. Blue. He said he was some kind of artificer and wanted to know all about it. So I gave him the basics. Ink in the tube drains out and on the little ball. I'm not sure how they work beyond that. I sold one of my least chewed on spares to him for two gold coins. I think that's a lot. Journal Entry 11 Alex is in a coma. He tried doing that magic shit today. We sat down to watch, at a safe distance, and he did the hands thing and said the words. Had the materials and then he grunted and fell over. He was out for a few hours before we realized he didn't just faint. We dragged him to the sun worshippers temple and they're taking care of him for now. They have some sort of clinic going on. I don't know the details. I spilled the beans to the priest that we're from off world. He got this weird look in his eyes and put his hand on my head and yelled smite. I felt something, but I don't know what. He apologized profusely afterwards, saying it was some kind of misunderstanding. Is he a paladin? Anyways, Avery is staying to keep watch on him over the night. Journal Entry 12 We're in hiding now. Apparently word got out about us. The local magistrate or vizier decided we should be rounded up. Ian, Max, and Austin were nabbed and taken to the prisons or dungeon or whatever they have here. I stole some clothes off a clothesline and were getting dressed as locals and hanging out in an old abandoned house on the other end of town. The locals think it's haunted and it does have a creepy vibe. It's a temporary solution though. Journal Entry 13 
Amanda says she was up all night talking to a ghost that resides here. Some girl that was murdered by a cult of some kind long ago. In other news, Amanda isn't the only one losing it. I robbed someone today in an alleyway. I ran out of money and old starvation hit. Snuck up behind them and taser to the back. Ended up with a handful of silver coinage. That should keep us fed for a few days. Journal Entry 14 I haven't heard from Avery in a few days, so I went to see what was going on at that church. Alex is up and moving around, but he's still kind of out of it, having trouble speaking and whatnot. It's like he's suffered a stroke. The priest person said they could heal it in time using their divine power, but that there would be a price for it, and not the kind of price you can pocket. The only explanation as to what happened that they gave was that magic was a dangerous thing to the untrained. So much for Alex's dream of becoming a wizard. At least the church is keeping him out of the hands of the guards. Journal Injury 15 Ran into that Artificer guy today. He wanted to know more of the land I came from. Have to be careful about anyone overhearing what with the guards on lookout for us. I didn't tell him much, but I did sketch out a bicycle and the basics of how they worked. He was fascinated and ran off with the page after giving me a few silvers. Bicycles. Here. Imagine that. I don't think they know what rubber is, though. I could be wrong, though. Journal Entry 16. That Arvisurg showed up again. He is running a caravan over to the next stop in the trade circle, some place called Wild Lake, and invited us all to come along as caravan guards. He knows the guards are looking for us, and this is the best he can do to assist, I guess. Most of us couldn't even defend ourselves, but it gives us a chance to get out of this place. Avery and Alex are staying behind at that sun church. Journal Entry 17 well, we've been given some shitty used leather armor and a spear, and we're off on this caravan job. We're getting paid, too, a handful of gold to boot. So as long as nothing horrible happens, we should be okay here. We're with five other guards who are locals. I had no idea how to put on the armor. It was all straps and leather, so I watched the locals put theirs on and imitate it. I know I fucked up at some point. It doesn't feel right. Anyways, this trip should be about five days at cart speed. There are six carts in the caravan and ten of us on guard duty total. Five of us foreigners and five locals, plus some ten merchants, cart drivers, and so on. There's several beast people things with us and one rowdy dwarf, but otherwise, all human. Journal Entry 18 What the fuck am I doing here? Why? Why won't I wake up? Journal Entry 19 So much walking. My legs ache, my arms ache, my feet hurt, almost twisted my ankle, I hate this place. Us Terrans have been having an entirely different experience from the locals on this trip. The locals are enjoying the walk, chatting and spending the nights around the campfire telling silly stories of drunken bravery in local heroes. Us Terrans are around the fire, all cramped up, in pain, and mumbling about all the things we miss of home. I can feel the emotional difference between both our groups. It's the oddest sensation. But I'm just tired. Journal Entry 20 Dan's dead. He was one of us. I don't know much about him other than he liked to sing to his MP3 collection during the run. We couldn't even bury him. So we're wandering along when these green things come rushing out of the underbrush. Goblins. Panic. Everything goes to shit. Dan gets a gut full of sore before he can do anything. I managed to get out my gun and I don't know, I was panic firing I guess? I hit at least three of the little fuckers. I'm down eight bullets. I have to be more careful. The goblins were driven off but there are other injured. We had time to loot the bodies but not bury Dan. Left at the side of the fucking road, stripped of everything to be eaten by the fucking wolves or whatever. Journal Entry 21 We, the Terrans, held a small memorial for Dan. The locals don't quite get why we are bothering for someone we barely knew. We divided his belongings amongst the rest of us. We should make it to Wild Lake in two days. I hope we made the right decision joining this caravan. The next town may be worse. It may be better. I don't know. Journal Entry 22 had a bit of a scare today. 
ran into a group of elven rangers on some hunt today. Almost mistook them for bandits. We're all a little jumpy. They seemed alright people, I suppose. Unless they really are bandits and are just waiting for the rest of their guys. Anyways, they were going opposite directions from us. During all of this, I managed to get my tablet charged up with my solar charger and taught the artificer guy how to play Angry Birds during camp. He was entranced by it. I think he's starting to understand just how foreign we are. In the meantime, we practiced with some of the weapons we picked off the goblin corpses. The locals had a good laugh at us as we flailed around with blunted short swords. Journal Entry 23 Well, I figure we've been here a month now. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't been keeping an accurate count and since I'm not riding every day, it's hard to estimate. We made it to Wild Lake around midday. Contrary to my expectations, there is no lake involved. Apparently there was one here way back, but it drained out in some dungeon or mine collapse. It's slightly larger than Rosenbridge with a wooden outer wall. I saw my first airship today, a flying boat parked in the eastern portion of the town. According to the locals, it regularly shows up every few weeks to pick up and deliver shipments from another kingdom. That's not all, either. We passed a slave market on the way in. This is the first time any of us have seen anything like this. I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's perfectly legal according to the locals. Journal Entry 24 We got paid today. Five gold. We're all staying in a local hostel slash tavern for traders and their crews. We're bunked up with some odd people. They're all red, and some of them look like they have a coral reef growing out of their chin, just covered in skin. Tieflings, I suppose? Where the hell are we? As creepy as they look, they seem to be okay, and I'm not getting any bad vibes off them. One of them was a musician and played some tunes. Marcus got his hands on one of their instruments and started playing Stairway to Heaven. The musician took interest and the two of them spent the rest of the night exchanging ideas. On the other hand, the Arvisor kept asking me for new tech ideas. I think I'll show him the wonders of the safety razor. God knows I'll need to get a replacement from somewhere when mine wears out. Journal Entry 25 Nope. Still here. Not a dream. Why isn't it a dream? I was in the tavern today when some bald elf chick covered in tattoos sits down next to me and says in the most serious tone ever that my mind was like a locked treasure chest and that she must get inside. That's the weirdest pickup line I've ever heard. I quickly left. Too much weird for me. I can only take so much. The headache that showed up just before she did didn't help either. So more information about Wild Lake. There is a flooded dungeon under the town that ran under a lake that was once some burial mound of some so-and-so king from centuries past. Parts of it are unflooded and the adventurers raid it on a regular basis. you think there wouldn't be anything left to steal after all this time. It's also used as a shelter for the atypical races that aren't welcome in town. The little inhuman ones like those fucking goblins. Journal Entry 26 With the trade run done, we're kind of out of work. Our money isn't going to last for very long. I poked around town looking for opportunities for a while. What do I have training in that works here? Nothing. Marcus picked up a guitar at the market and is now working as a bard in the cheap tavern and making a silver or two a night. And that's at least something. Amanda keeps wanting to go with him to sing, but she can't hold a note to save her life. I guess we're stuck doing remedial jobs any bumfuck shit farmer can do. We can't even read the damn writing. We're illiterate here. Maybe I'll be a professional thief. <laughs> That'll be the day. Journal Entry 27 Well, I got a job sweeping up at the fucking slave market. Wonderful. Nothing like mournful stares and whispered pleas of help from dirty, barely clothed captives to keep the spirits up. I don't know what to think. At least I'm making some money, the pittance that it is. Did I mention that they randomly get whipped? They use some whip that doesn't leave marks, but apparently hurts them like hell. Who makes up this shit? Mike, on the other hand, has caught on and captured the attention of some girl who agreed to teach him to read in exchange for something. I don't want to know. 
He is trying to teach us what he learns, handed down knowledge. Journal Entry 28. Airship is in town. Watch that for a while. They couldn't come up with a better design than a flying boat. It apparently isn't seaworthy either, so why bother? Maybe I could teach them aerodynamics. You'd think it would be obvious. Anyways, I'm starting to see slaves beaten in my dreams. It's only my third day. It's time for an occupation change. Anything else. I heard there's some call for help with one of the dungeon areas I might look into. Why not? Maybe the guards will leave me alone. I made the mistake of showing them my driver's license when they asked for identification last night. Weirded them all out. Speaking of which, why the hell did I bring my wallet and car keys with me? Journal Entry 29 Well, I got sucked into some adventure thing going on. Hired with some locals to check out and clear a lizard creature, kobold, infestation of one of the dungeons. We're to head in within a few hours and see what's going on down there. Also on the team is a big burly guy who is also illiterate, a bored dwarf and a highly excitable elven wizard or sorcerer. I can't tell the difference yet. Luckily, we didn't meet in a tavern because that would be too cliche. No, we met around the town fountain and got our mission objectives. I at least have the leather armor and short sword from the caravan trip. That and my big knife from home and my sig. I need more ammo. I need a source of ammo. I have seven more magazines worth of ammo. Eight bullets each. Apparently, there's going to be another guy joining us at the dungeon entrance. I guess we'll see what that's about. Anyways, I did ask the wizard about what happened with Alex. He just gave me the dangers of magic speech the Sun Priest did. Also of note, caught sight of that bald chick following me again. Kind of hard to miss her. She's good at causing headaches. Journal Entry 30 So, we met up with a paladin of some warrior god and hit the dungeon. He was a very boisterous fellow. Lots of bragging. So this was my first dungeon. Everyone brought torches. I brought a flashlight. It's a camping thing. Green power and all that. Solar battery and all. It should last a good three hours. So we go in and sure enough, kobolds. Ugly, filthy looking things. Making weird lizard noises when they weren't speaking pigged in English or common or whatever. The dungeon was more or less just burial ruins. Pretty straightforward. Looking back now, it was pretty dangerous. These things were out to kill us. And we were out to kill them. What the fuck was I thinking? Wasted two bullets and learned that my big stainless steel knife was a piece of shit when it snapped in half upon hitting bone. The short sword did better, but I'll be damned if I'm not clumsy as hell with it. The paladin gave me some hints and tips in the middle of a fucking fight because this is nothing for him. Anyways, I didn't get any injuries except some scrapes. I'm still fast on my feet and my reaction time is good. Found some stuff, some kind of silver chain necklace I found in the mud and some coinage the kobolds were hoarding. Do people actually sell them stuff? They seemed a little feral for trade. Also got paid 15 gold for the job. I don't know if I can do something like that again. Such stress, I can't describe it properly. Terror and thrill combined together. Journal Entry 31 So I spent the last few days in the tavern, possibly getting lead or mercury poisoning. I'm surprised none of us have caught anything yet. I'm the only one who brought medical supplies, and all I had time for was a bottle of penicillin. Stupid portal, why did I ever listen to you? Anyways, Marcus got some apprentice deal under a barb to try and learn bard magic. As long as he doesn't suffer a stroke like Alex did, if it will even work. Who knows how different we are from the locals. Aside from that, I'm starting to learn to read the store signs from Mike's hand-me-down teachings. It's a bit more complicated though. There's a simplified written language and a standard. We're apparently learning the simplified. I guess that's a good enough start. Journal Entry 32. That bitch got to me, and I think I had an epileptic seizure. She showed up suddenly and grabbed me from behind. I know it was her. I felt it. I made for my taser, and suddenly I couldn't think straight and went into convulsions. Next thing I know, I wake up in a local temple. Some love and peace worshiper temple. 
Nothing was missing, but I've got the headache to end all headaches and random nosebleeds. She fucking mind raped me and then dumped me off at the temple. What the fuck? Fucking scions. I'll get her. I know exactly where she is. And why the fuck do I know exactly where she is? What did she do to me? Journal 233. I got cleaned and rested up. Still got the headache. Paid a visit to Miss Scion. Brought my gun, but in hindsight, I don't think I could have used it if I wanted to. We had a nice talk. Not sure how much, if any of it, was really manufactured. I'm pretty paranoid about it. I don't know what they can fully do. Going there was a bad idea. There was more than one. It's all kind of a blur. I do know a lot of talking was done, but not a word was said. From what I can recall and managed to put together, they're part of some backdoor manipulators of the local guilds, manipulating towards their profits. I think the ideas I leaked to the artificer got out, and that brought me to their attention, and then they found something. Something I didn't know was there. Now I think I need them to learn to control it or go insane from increasing mental stress. Or at least that's what they want me to think. None of this makes sense. Journal Entry 34 It's not a headache, it's feedback. So much but no solitude to be found in the city borders. I slipped outside for a bit and the volume lowered to acceptable levels. I will have to return. Maybe Marcus can play that song that puts me to sleep. He learned how. It was a mental ingredient that Alex was missing. He couldn't observe the state of mind he needed and the training was missing. I wonder how he and Avery are doing, or the others that got captured. I have to go back to her. She will teach me. I will make her. And that's the end of the video. I hope y'all got a kick out of it and are enjoying the story so far. Another part of the story will come out next week on the same day this video was posted. Additionally, if you want double the content from both Neckbeardia and Thread Thrasher, be sure to subscribe to both channels and click the bell icon so you know when the videos are released through the week. As well, be sure to join both the Neckbeardia and Thread Thrasher Discord servers so you can talk to us and give us feedback directly. We do like our feedback. The more feedback we get, the happier we are because we know what you guys like, what you guys want, and what you guys are about. Additionally, down in the comments below, let us know if you like this story and want to hear more of it. If you don't like the story, that's fine. We'll find something else. There's always stories to write and make and narrate and share with you. This has been Guard Bro, and I will see you next time. All those moments will be lost.